Welcome to the bullpen. This is our monthly conversation about markets featuring Tommy Grisafi from Advanced Trading. Tommy, of course, at Mayville, North Dakota. Tommy, it's meeting season. We're talking to farmers all around. Everybody's getting geared up for this spring planting season. And it certainly looks like uh, it's going to be probably one of the most expensive crops uh, they've ever put in the ground. Yeah, if there is any fear with the farmer, Don, it, it, it's definitely on this that the money that's going out. Uh, interest rates went up, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but it, it, it is definitely going to be expensive to put this crop in, and there's no getting around that. The price of fertilizer was much higher in the fall, and the commitment to plant acres, whether you're looking at uh, cash rents, labor, we can go over all the things, and the farmers and ranchers who watch this show are all aware that it is going to be by far one of the most expensive crops they've ever planted. We have seen some adjustment in, in natural gas prices, and certainly that has some implications for fertilizer, right? Absolutely. So uh, natural gas has absolutely collapsed. And although we thought it would be a cold winter and Europe's going to run out of stuff, as luck would have it and Mother Nature sure cooperated, it was an above, above average uh, temperatures in Europe. And we have had some cold spells. You up north have had some cold spells and out east have had cold spells. Obviously, all of America was cold during Christmas. But I have to tell you, here today, I'm in Indiana today. It's 45 degrees out. It's beautiful. I think you could put a light jacket on, go for a walk. The birds are actually back. It's kind of strange how nice the weather's been. Matter of fact, I drove over the Mississippi River yesterday morning and then back home last night. Very little, if no, uh, ice on the Mississippi River in that Bentendorf Quad Cities area. So, Boats will be moving. People will be moving this. Uh, the old days of, oh, the river's all log jammed. <laughs> There's water in it. We had a problem with that uh, last year. Things are looking to shape up okay for spring. Uh, I guess in, on my radar that, yeah, natural gas prices are lost two-thirds of their value. And what's that mean to fertilizer? And I, I noticed some interesting charts over the weekend of fertilizer, and there's no doubt fertilizer prices are coming down. And that would uh, coordinate very well with uh, front month corn prices and and DS twenty three. So you look at DS twenty three, uh, it has a five in front of it. DS twenty four, five fifty. I bought some DS twenty five for a guy today, five oh three for DS twenty five. So we have record high inputs in a corn market that tends to be fifty cents lower every year. That's going to be a real problem for the American farmer looking forward. Done. Not only the American farmer, but the world farmer. Yeah, no doubt. When you take a look at the, the economy as a whole, we had that jobs report out uh, last week. Uh, it, uh, it's pretty impressive with the numbers that we're seeing out there. Uh, Fed came out with some interest rates and bumping things by a, a quarter point. Uh, what's your take on what that means really in the macro economy? It's really interesting that the Fed raised rates and now looking the uh, a day after that, we had that jobs report on Friday, absolutely on fire. America still creating jobs. So you have the Fed who says, we're going to raise interest rates and we're going to slow down the economy. Apparently going from zero to 5% didn't get it done. They have more to do. So I think people were waiting for the Fed to pause. I do not see a pause now. I do see more quarter points. We're actually still creating jobs in America. Uh, if, if someone says we're in a recession, and maybe there are certain sectors that are in a recession, you see Microsoft with big layoffs. The tech sector is definitely a tech wreck. They're getting rid of folks, but there's not a farmer or rancher watching this video who probably doesn't need to hire someone. Companies, as you know, you're in Grand Forks, help wanted signs everywhere, whether it be fast food, uh, all different levels and layers of jobs. The medical field, help wanted everywhere, signing bonuses. There's still some parts of the economy that are absolutely on fire, Don. These workforce issues certainly are a challenge no matter where we are. We're not seeing a, an end to that story. Uh, one of the headlines that we uh, saw over the last uh, week here has been China with their big uh, surveillance balloon got uh, shot down over the uh, weekend. The U.S. and China, uh, the, we certainly need each other, but there's been a lot of tension between the two countries. Uh, uh, do you see that ramping up as we move forward here? Well, we had uh, one of our big chiefs here, uh, you know his name better than I do, he canceled a trip and that was, he was supposed to be going over there just to smooth things over and for him to cancel that's a big deal now the soybean market would be the one if if we if we came in the sunday night and we saw soybeans limit down then we'd say wow this this america china thing's uh, a big deal right now we'll call it balloon gate 
And that's all I know is there's a balloon. It flew over the United States. We shot it down. I believe it was real. I don't think it was just TikTok videos and everything else. It, it seems to be real. The president made a statement about it. What's it mean? I don't know. If I go outside my house, it looks like a normal day here in America. I, I guess the only thing I can tell you about Bloom Gate is that just a distraction from what we should be paying attention to? Is there something much bigger going on? And we had these earthquakes uh, in Turkey. Tens of thousands of people are probably dying, and all you could see on the news is about a balloon. You know, where are we getting our news from? Where are we getting our information from? How does that matter to the farmers they go to plant these crops? Probably a bunch of noise, and we need to just keep our eye on the ball about the three things I always tell you about. Bushels, bins, basis. It's February. We're coming into crop insurance here. We're establishing that crop insurance. Let's get some floor set. Let's let's play defense. Nobody's going to help you more than yourself. So uh, maybe shut off the TV and start taking a pencil of those numbers because things are going to get really tight moving forward. We have a supply demand report out this week from USDA. I'm guessing a lot of attention is going to be focused on South American production and any sign of uh, demand for this uh, this U.S. crop. Anything else that you're going to be looking at in, in these numbers? I think the South American number will be uh, really the key. How how big is Brazil's crop and how much or how fast can the USDA uh, dial back Argentina's crop? And then we have second crop Safrina that we'll, we'll be talking about. And I'm just amazed with everything as we come on the one year anniversary of Ukraine that these are the prices we are. Because what's going to happen, Don, is eventually over time, so many people got into agriculture the last few years with these higher prices that if and when, and I do hope the Ukraine uh, gets back into full-blown production agriculture, and it's going to take a while, but we're, we're going to come to a point where we have too many bushels. And that's really starting to scare me that the world, although it was a huge panic last year, look at wheat. Look at wheat prices. Not impressive with Board of Trade wheat. KC Wheat, Minneapolis, they've come way off from where they were a year ago. And volatility is down. When you look at corn volatility, soybean volatility, and wheat volatility, option volatility is down. We just celebrated Groundhog Day last week. And every day right now on the Board of Trade Grains feels like ground, Groundhog Day. We open up, we start lower, we go higher, and we close unchanged. It, the market's really not moving. And if we continue at this pace, it looks like December 23, corn spring crop insurance level will be around 590, and then November beans will be around that 1360 level, Don, if things stay the same. Now, as you said, we have a big USDA number, and that could alter things a little bit. But once we get through the 15th, 16th of February, that insurance level will be pretty solid. I found it interesting. You mentioned that uh, not only are we pricing new crop, but you got customers talking about that 24 and even that 25 crop. Um, is there much of that going on? It's interesting when they bring it up. I had a great uh, client in South Dakota. He said, uh, can we talk about 24 crop? I said, absolutely. I think they're trying to be defensive. I think they're trying to set a floor. Uh, we all have that feeling, at least I do, I'll speak for myself, is that one day this grain market's just going to lose its bid. And I have to pose the question. I don't know the answer. How bad financially would it hurt you and your farm if grains pulled the natural gas? Natural gas was 90.10, 90.40 a few months ago. We're trading 2350 right now in natural gas. Literally one of the most precious commodities in the world lost two thirds of its value. Tie that into fertilizer, supply and demand and everything else, these higher interest rates, high input costs. It's really scaring me. So yeah, the 24, 25 question, that's legit. But then when you tell people what the price is, 50 cents lower next year, 50 cents lower the year after that, they're not so impressed. So it's, it's an interesting conversation. You mentioned Groundhog Day. That's what this livestock market seems like, particularly hogs. They've got uh, nowhere to go. And uh, this cattle market, we see that there's some optimism ahead in this cattle cycle, but uh, it's still been chopping around the way it looks. Yeah, very quiet ranges. I thought personally I'd be trading a lot of cattle this year. That has not been the exciting market. By far the most exciting market has been soybean, soybean meal, cattle market. You, you'll read a headline. Oh, uh, several of the months made a, a new contract high. They're doing it with very low enthusiasm. As far as hogs, it's nothing for them to move 300 ticks in a day, but they're moving up, down, up, down. I don't really see a, a true trend anymore in commodities. I, I feel that commodities are starting to go sideways. Look at crude oil, one of the biggest of the big. It's in the lower 70s. So well off our highs from last year when we touched 130 in crude oil and other commodities are really starting to come down in that volatility 
I guess I look at volatility as what it costs you to buy insurance has come down tremendously. Well, as we move forward here, going into the spring season, obviously we have the crop report this week, uh, prospective plantings at the end of March. USDA's got their Ag Outlook meeting here in February. Any other key things that we need to be uh, looking out for? Just just be cautiously optimistic. I, I'd rather be Ford sold this year and owning calls than uh, uh, than having a put. You know, if you, if you like insurance, buy insurance. Buy the best crop insurance you can. Buy the best option insurance you can. If you don't, I, I, I'm I confident that store and ignore won't work like it did in other years. I, I work with an incredible group of people who were so fortunate to have bushels and a great price. And everything that, you know, that came for several reasons, weather events in Ukraine. I'm not so sure. Just based off the futures market, a guy who's been at the Chicago Board of Trade since 1990, the Chicago Board of Trade futures market says things are going to get tougher down the road. The interest rates, also the Federal Reserve, say interest rates are going to be higher, a lot higher for a long time. Now, you and I, I'm 50. You're close to 60. You're probably going to be 59 for a few more years here. We know that you know when you're dealing with higher interest rates, it's like walking uphill at, at, at quite an incline. So be very cautious with your money. Take your bushels, take that grain, turn it into cash, take that money, pay off operating, and put that money in a CD. If you're so blessed to have extra money, go make 5%. Don't go watch the price of grains break 15%. That's my concern and my philosophy, Don. Well, I always appreciate the insight, Tommy. Thank you, Don. I like your vest, by the way. Hey, yeah, I wore it just for you. And we thank you for joining our monthly update on the market news with Tommy Grisapi from Advanced Trading, of course, Tommy in Mayville, North Dakota. Until our next edition of the Bullpen, I'm Don Wick on the Red River Farm Network.